What's going on everybody? My name is Sean and welcome to another episode of Live Coding with RabbitWorks JavaScript. Tonight is a very special episode because we have an awesome guest joining us and it's actually the origin creator of this project that we've been recreating from the get-go. So with me we have the none other than CJ from the Coding Garden. Super happy to have you with us joining us to help us figure, uh, finish off this project. How's it going, Hello. dude? Yeah, uh, happy to be here. It's going good. Good. So, like I was saying, you were this project is based off of your original. It was uh, the noob quest that you did with Tony, full stack off from scratch, and yeah. we've kind of just been pandering our way through it. But it's been a lot of fun, and I and I know that a lot of people have really enjoyed the the uh, the series. So thanks for giving me the go ahead to recreate it. For sure. So really quick in a nutshell, I guess. So what we're doing tonight is going to be dis or debugging our the cores issue that I was running into last week, and CJ is here to help us with that. And then once we get done with that, we're gonna go through and do sort of like a kind of like a code review of the the project and see what he thinks. So that being said, uh, CJ, what do you think, or can you just give like like we talked about, kind of like an elevator <laughs> pitch of what cores is to somebody that might not be very familiar and why it's used? Uh, for sure. Um, so core stands for cross origin resource sharing. Uh, and it's actually a security feature of the browser. Um, though to most developers, it's, or like new developers, it's a pain to get around. Um, but, uh, <laughs> ulti ultimately, uh, it's a restriction on where certain origins can make requests. So I think like the first thing is to define like what an origin is. Um, let me see if I can find a good MDN link. Um, but basically the origin is where your website um, is like the domain of your website. You can think of it like that, but the origin actually includes the protocol. So whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, uh, the domain itself or the host, and then um, the port as well. So in your particular uh, example, and I guess, are you running your code uh, locally right now or you have it deployed? Yeah, it's deployed. Um, that's what we are, that's the where we're at right now. Uh, do you want okay. me to spin it up locally or? Yeah, that'd be good because actually uh, we ha we're in the live share, so that way I can see the local uh, local server as well. Okay. Um, but I guess essentially when we have it locally, we have two different origins. So your back end is an Express app, and it's running on port thirteen thirty seven. So HTTP localhost thirteen thirty seven. That's one origin, and then your front end is a view app. So I'm guessing that's running on port eighty eighty. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So those are two different origins. So and so basically your front end, which is on HTTP uh, colon slash slash localhost 8080 is at that origin and it tries to make a request to the back end. And if you if your back end has not set up things correctly, um, the browser is going to throw an error. And so I guess that's what's happening right now. There might be some other issues as well. Um, because uh, on your back end, I do see that we you have cores set up. Uh, and basically your your cores middleware is configured to allow a different origin. Um, and uh, that's great, but there are other issues you could run into. So, like, if your backend route that you're trying to hit actually results in an error and it never responds, it there's a possibility that it doesn't actually reply with the the correct origin header. So you'll get a cores error then as well. Right, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the basics of it are um, origins can't request to other origins unless those other origins have allowed it. I think that's cores in a gist. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> It is definitely very confusing for somebody that doesn't have very much experience using it yet and working yeah. with it. Uh, let's see how can I share this with you? Um, it actually, already... it's already it's already shared. Yeah, so um, I'm on localhost eighty eighty, cool. and let's see if it pops up. And then if you start the backend app up as well, it should share that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's in the second terminal, or the second window of the terminal. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can see your terminals too. Nice. <laughs> oh, it is. Um, can you can you share that one? So um, under shared servers, just like maybe click add or something because I can only see that uh, localhost 8081. Oh. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Yep, cool. So that works. Um, yeah, and then right now, um, I guess the origin is um, hard coded to be your deployed URL, right? So uh, um, yeah, 
Yeah, if we're looking at uh, backend server app.js line seven, yep. um, I think uh, I think we should set this up with an environment variable, um, oh. just so just so you don't have to like change it every time you're like debugging it. Um, so, do you have a dot env for your backend? Uh, no, I never got that or never set anything like that up for environment variables. Okay, um, can we set that up? Yeah, of course. Let's do yeah, let's do it. Um, so, on your backend, let's install. Oh, I guess you already have dot env. Uh, that oh yeah, okay. Look at that idea. Um, <laughs> but you do need to config. Oh, you're already configuring it too. I don't but... know. What, do I have a dot env file? Oh, I do. That's just um, my token secret. Don't look. Oh yeah, for that's oh, that's for the JSON token. Uh, you, so you just opened it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I I can't see it in in my live share. Um, but it is there. But what I'm thinking is you add a new um a new environment variable that's just called uh, like cores origin. Okay. And so that way on your deployed server, we can set the core's origin to be your deployed front end, but locally we can just set it to localhost. Um, yeah, and it's okay if you show that token secret because um, you you should have a different one on the deployed server. <laughs> okay. And they can't see the whole thing anyway, so. Yeah. Um, actually, can you share your screen with, um, with Zoom really quick? Yeah. Because that'll be a little bit easy for me. I'm like tabbing back and forth. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> Nice, cool. Yeah, so in here, um, I would add a variable, I'd call it like cores underscore origin. And for now, it's actually gonna be your local local host. So like HTTP clone slash slash local host um, port 8080. And use, <clears throat> for this, you don't need straight or quotes around it because it's just a string because it's in the end. Dot end yeah. File. Yeah, you can add uh, double quotes, um, but I, I actually don't put them, um, but you can have them if you need to. Um, yeah, and then add the port on there. Um, and then the other thing is adding a, a node env variable. So um, where did you deploy your backend to? Uh, it's deployed to now. That okay. sh. Like by default, now doesn't actually set the node env to production. Um, but we can set that like in your environment variables for now. But what I would do in here is add another one. Um, called a node underscore env. And here we'll set this to development. Yeah. So, uh, and then basically when you deploy, um, you'll have all these environment variables, but when you're on your deployed server, node env will be set to production and cores origin will be set to like your front end Netlify URL. Okay, cool. Cool. And that does that automatically then? Uh, we'll have to set up the secrets. So, um, okay. can we look at your your now.json? Like, do you have an environment variable section in there? Yep. Or I don't have an environment variable section yet. Though. Yeah, and we can add that later. Like, whenever we deploy this, okay. um, to like say no DNV is uh, production and things like that. Cool. Uh, so now that we have that, let's use it. So in your app.js, um, where we're setting up cores, um, where is the cores? Is it uh, up higher? It's yeah, cool. And so uh, line 19 is the, so that's actually where it's reading in the .env. That should be above anything that uses environment variables. So let's move that like above line six. Yeah, cool. So that uh, that line of code runs and now all of the those variables have been added to the environment. Oh, cool. Uh, and then we, then we can use it. So what I'm thinking is um, instead of having like that string there, um, actually, can I, just, just a second. I think there's a way for me to draw on your screen. I want to get that going. <laughs> um, no. Annotate. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. <laughs> um, awesome. But right there on on line nine, um, where it says origin, that's where we'll, we'll pull it in from the dot env. So you can get rid of the, the that string value right there. Um, and then just say uh, process. Well, actually, um, well, actually, we added the node env, but we actually can just do yeah process env dot cores origin. And so now locally, that's going to be set to localhost eighty eighty. And then when we deploy, we'll set an environment variable with your Netlify URL. So that should be good. Okay. Um, now let's just try debugging it locally and see if we get that cores error. Um, Okay. 
So that uh, the first thing that gets uh, runs right away is from app dot view because it it uh, hits the oh, verify thing just to see if there's already um, a key set with information okay. on it. And so yeah, I see in your back end you have the the deployed URL there as well. Um, can we set it up so it's dynamic? Yeah, where are you looking at then? Uh, in your backend code. So like in your, I guess your app.view or wherever you had the, I'm um, oh, sorry, your, your front-end code. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, here, yeah. So like uh, anywhere where you're making a fetch request. Yep. Um, so here, I think we'll do a similar thing. So um, create a file, like, and actually, I think this is where I can, I can help you out a little bit because um, I have the editor. But yeah, here's what I want to do. Like in source directory, I'm going to create a, just a file called like API URL. Okay. Um, and then this file you'll you'll import anywhere that you need um, the the backend API URL. So, um, and we can just do like a export default API URL. We'll we'll define it first. Um, and oh, uh. We can check to see. So if window window dot location dot oh man <laughs> <laughs> something's wrong with my keyboard. Uh, window dot location dot host name um, is equal to localhost. Then uh, this is just going to make the request to uh, your local um, local server. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost thirteen thirty seven right um, uh, for the back end. For the back end, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then otherwise, uh, we can throw in your production URL in there. So if you grab the production URL from that other file and just put it in here. Okay. Uh, the back end, uh, fsafs backend.now.sh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't go in there. What the heck? It could be because my cursor's in here too. I don't know. I think that did it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Cool. Um, and so this file basically will define what that backend URL is, and then we'll just export it. So export default uh, API URL. Uh, and then now anywhere in your front end um, where you need the um, API URL will just require or import this file in. Okay. Um, so like in app.view, um, like line 17 here, we're using um, auth verify. So in this file, I would actually import it in. So let's import API URL from API URL. Um, and then this just becomes like a template string. So uh, that, that. And then this section here will just replace with uh, API URL. So cool. now it should work locally. And then when we deploy, we don't have to change anything. Nice. Um, cool. Uh, and then the other thing is in this file, uh, right here on line 22, you're setting the access control out origin header. Um, I, I mentioned to you this earlier, but this is actually only a header that can be set by the backend. OK. Um, so um, it's up to your back end to set this header. And if your front end send this, sends this header, it actually doesn't mean or do anything. So okay. we, can <laughs> we can actually just get rid of that. Cool. <laughs> um, awesome. OK, so now that this, this should hit the local host URL, and we should be able to test it locally. Um, so I guess just make sure both servers are running. Uh, yep. Cool. And then if you open up the browser to local host. OK, so. Yeah, and if you click on the network tab, um, so because I think what's happening is like when the app loads, it makes the request to slash verify, right? Yep. Okay, so if you refresh the page, we should see it. Oh, uh, you need to make it a little bit bigger. The yeah, it's, it's hidden. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you notice right now, verify is pending. I think that's one of the one of the one of the main issues is yes. Yeah, so if you click on that, uh, the back end isn't responding. Um, so. What will happen is this is going to time out, and then that shows you a cores error because the response never completes. Oh, OK. Um, that makes but let's, sense. Just, let's click on the console. And if we wait for it to time out, I think eventually you'll see a cores error. 
And yeah, that's usually what's been that's what's been happening on the deployed version too, because it takes a minute to throw the error. Cool. Yeah, I think the um, for me at least, I, I always like to replicate things locally because it can be really hard to uh, debug things on the deployed server because every time you want to change something, you have to like redeploy. Right. Um, so if we can get the issue happening locally, that's great because then we can it's easier to debug and add, add things too. Yeah, and uh, Paul Hacker in the chat just mentioned um, we could use Axios and uh, set the um, the base URL um, mm -hmm. to the thing, but I guess you're just using fetch, so it doesn't yeah. really have a, fe a feature like that. But if we were, you, you could do that. Uh, and did it complete yet? Uh, I guess it didn't. <laughs> no. um, but what I would do now is actually let's look at your uh, your backend logs to see if that verify route like threw an error or, or did anything like that. Um, that's because I refreshed the page a couple times, but yeah, close before resin. Okay, so um, I think that's where your first issue is. So let's look at that route on your backend and um, just try to debug and see what goes wrong, because um, it could be that an error happens and then it just a response never uh, gets sent to the front end. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So that should be down here. Verify. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I think this is the issue right here. So it says if rec.user do this thing, um, but if there was no rec.user, you have no response going to the front end. Oh, yeah. Makes um, sense. <laughs> so otherwise, I would, you would probably just do like a add, add like an else statement and do a res.json with like a user and a null object. I, I guess ultimately it's up to like what is your front end doing with this when it gets the response? Basically, just loads that information for like the user into Vuex to be from the cookie. Or, um. Okay, and does it check to see if the result is like null or something like that? Uh, Let, let's, let's do see. like first. Let's yeah, let's see what the front end is doing with this with okay. this request. So this is um, just it right here. And then, oh, then verify. Um, oh, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, you're so doing it uh, runs verified. That. <laughs> yeah, with the result. So let's look at that action and see if what it does. Oh, it runs the command. Um, oh, wait a second. Update store user logged in muta. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Here. Um. And this is saying if there's a payload dot message, then it's. I'm guessing this. That means it's an invalid response. <laughs> yeah, like an error. Okay, there's definitely a better way to handle that. But um, if since that's the case, and you've already coded it that way, we can make your backend do that. So um, if you go back to that verify route in the else, we should respond with a JSON object that has a message property. Um, yeah, so do res.json right here. And then the message is probably just like not logged in. Yeah, and I, th I think this was your main issue. So basically this request would happen, it never gets a response times out and then that shows the course error. Um, gotcha. So at least now now it's gonna get a response. Um, line 137, you can just get rid of. So because we added that, uh, we're using the, the course module, you don't need to manually set uh, access control allow origin. Um, that's just gonna get, that'll get set with every request using that middleware. So you should be good there. Oh, okay. So I have that in this spot too. So yeah, I can get rid of all of them. Don't need it, yep. That might be all of them. If I come across another one, I'll delete it then. Let's see. Okay. Guy. Good. Yeah, that should be it. Cool. So yeah, if you go back to the browser, um, we should get a response now. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
Um, you have to check out the network. Oh, probably refresh the page. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's doing something. There we go. All right, let's see. And verify is still pending. Oh, uh, do you have Nodemon running on your backend? Yeah. Um, looks like it didn't um, restart. Okay. Still didn't get a response for some reason, but let's let's see why. Yeah, it's pending. <clears throat> if you click on preview, I think nothing nothing's come back yet, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's more issues than just that. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go back to your backend code. Okay. Some of these tabs help. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, <clears throat> auth, uh, so do you want to be an app, 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 JS or the auth or? Uh, the verify route. Verify route. Slash verify, yeah. Oh, okay, so it first runs this, uh, is logged in middleware. Mm -hmm. Um, so something could be going wrong there. Let's look at your is logged in middleware. Um, I see. So uh, again, this isn't sending a response. So is logged in um, first checks to see if there's a token in your cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's not, then it just immediately does a return. This means that the server is just going to be waiting there. Well, it, it basically never sends a response. Oh, okay. Um, so um, should I be calling next there? Yeah. So, and you really, you might do return uh, next and then invoke next. Um, Yeah, and uh, basically, because if you do that, it's going to skip all the stuff below, but it is going to go on to the next uh, the next middleware. Though at the same time, I don't know if this is exactly the behavior that you want. Um, so like, should auth verify actually return an error if the user isn't logged in? Like, should it respond with like 401? Um, well, I guess just, uh, it would probably just be, I don't think it would be anything that would show up in the UI or anything like that. It would just say, like, ask you to log in without having... Because what it does is, like, if you log in, or if you go to the site and you already have the cookie in there, it just brings you to, the, like, the home, the dashboard right away. Okay, that makes sense. Um... Okay, yeah. So, and basically that's what that's what this will do because you, the route will still return a 200 status code, but instead it's going to respond with a message that says not logged in. Okay. Um, we also could respond with a message that just says like user null or something like that, but this should help. <laughs> so uh, let's just trace this. So is logged in, we'll call next. Um, and then if you scroll down, does it eventually, yeah. So it eventually calls next again too. Cool. Um, and so if you go back to the auth file, that goes here, and this should this should respond. This should, we're closer to get it getting it working. Let's, <laughs> see, right. let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. Wait. There you go. You got a response. Yeah. So if you cool. click uh, pre preview, uh, it should give us back an object that says not logged in. Nice. nice. Cool. So that <laughs> might actually fix your core's issue. <laughs> um, you can test out some other things, like just try logging in and see what happens. Oh, it's throwing an error now because I think. Oh, because I have that hard coded. Ah, uh, okay. So I would go ahead and update that. So everywhere in your front end code that you're. You have a URL, I would pull in the API URL um, thing that we created. And that's on the front end. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, okay, uh, let's see. So that all should be in... Is it in the store? Store. Yeah, yeah I'm handling everything in the store. We don't need to set that. Yep. 
Reset this. Um, so instead of these things, we can have, uh, we just import it. Yeah, just import API URL. And then I can just set those up as template strings as you did before, like just like this API URL. Yeah. So instead of remote URL, just pass an API URL. Cool. I believe those are the only two endpoints that it hits right now. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that and the verify one. So I think that's all three of them. Let's go see if that fixed the issue. Cool. Do I have to back in? Uh, I don't think so. If you look at the network, we can see if a request actually went out. Um, we can hide this uh, timeline. How do we do that? <laughs> um, that? Click filter? No, that's not it. The timeline is only useful sometimes, and otherwise it's like really in the way. There, there we go. We go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, especially when they have to have everything um, so big for live streaming and stuff, like all the yeah. fonts. Definitely takes okay. up a lot of space. So these are pending too. So I think it's potentially um, something up with uh, that particular route that isn't uh, responding if something went wrong or something like that. So let's look at your login route. On the front end or the back uh, end? Back end, back okay. end yeah. Uh, yeah, and so um, like, yeah, both of these are somewhat like issues with middleware. So if, if an express middleware never sends a response, um, the client is just going to wait forever, basically. Um, so if we look at the login route, let's see. Let's just look through the code to see what happens. So uh, we're going to validate the body. Uh, if there was no error, we find one user. And then with that user, we compare the password. Um, and if we're good to go, we send the response. Otherwise, we send an error. Um, if you just keep scrolling down, what happens if the, val the body was not valid? Uh, we do response error with res next in 422. Um, can I see the response error function? Yeah, Eddie D, uh, <clears throat> just to give you some context, this is actually a, a spinoff project of a uh, project that CJ did a, couple, or a while ago. So I think, I think he's pretty familiar with the what's going on overall <laughs> unless you want us to do like a walkthrough of it cj i mean i think you're pretty, pretty yeah i'm good um it. yeah i mean i think if anyone else needs it they can definitely look at some of your previous videos um, yeah see how you built it um okay something's going wrong in this route <laughs> uh let's actually let's set up the debugger because we can actually um like step through the code okay um so um let's do this yeah click the little bug there and then click on debug. And we're going to do Node.js. Um, we might have to set up the configuration. And you, oh, did it automatically attach? That's pretty cool. Um, scroll down to the login route, and let's set a breakpoint. Um, go in right here. So yeah, like right on the edge over here of line 101, uh, line 101. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is just off. Let me get rid of all that. <laughs> but yeah, if you click there, that, that adds the breakpoint. Cool. And so now uh, when that code gets hit, um, it should stop. Um, so if you go back to the browser and click login, it's going to hit this endpoint, and we should hit that breakpoint. Sure. Um, we might need to set up the debugger, though, because it Usually you have to tell it like what file it needs to run and things, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah, so, so it did send the requests. Um, but if we look, go back to Chrome, is anything stopping? 
Oh, and the... I'm oh, sorry, not Chrome Chrome. <laughs> VS Code. Oh. Um, okay, so yeah, this this isn't working. Um, let's do this. Um, can we kill that? Yeah, but click create a launch JSON file. Click that. Uh, we want node. And then we can tell it which program to launch. So if you scroll down, because um, yeah, we don't want to launch uh, server auth index.js. We probably want to launch uh, server source app.js. What, what's the main file that? Uh, yeah, app.js. Cool. So that should be good. Um, and then now, if you click, uh, well, uh, go to your terminal and kill the backend that's already running. Yep. And then now click the play button over here. Oh. And oh, no, you want, yeah. So we're not going to run it from there anymore. Uh, okay. We're going to run it from here. Play button right up there. Mm -hmm. All right. So now it's running. I think so, and let's try, and you shouldn't have to refresh the front end, but just click that login button and it should stop on the breakpoint. Go back to VS Code. Yeah, it is listening, cool. Um, let's go to uh, that auth file again and make sure the breakpoint's still there. Um... Yeah. And if you scroll up a little bit, um, okay, that's a git route, and then a post for login. That's yeah, that was just that's kind of just there from okay. from when I was making sure that it actually was working. The main one is that's, just the post. That's fine. Um, can you click click the breakpoint to turn it on off and on again? Huh. Okay. So it is running. Um, yeah, maybe refresh the page and click login again. I don't know. Maybe are you disabling that login button after click or something? No, um, hmm. should just should just be just a standard button. Oh wait, just a second. it says that the uh, localhost thirty three thirteen thirty seven isn't running. Um, can you just open a new tab and go to localhost thirteen thirty seven? It's running. Okay. Can you can you refresh your front end? <laughs> this is weird. What? Um dum dum dum. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning into the stream. I know most of you are here for CJ, but that's okay. Make sure to leave a follow or subscribe if you want to come back to more streams. Um, actually, I think I can request control. Yes, I'm going to control your computer if you will allow it. <laughs> Go for it. Warm in here. Nice. Okay. I'm curious why this didn't actually start up though. Um. Look over here, we can look at the uh, configurations. Launch uh, server source app.js. This one does the listening. Yep. Debugger attached. All right. What the heck? <sighs> Response to pre flight request <laughs> does not pass the control check. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Zero cents. Um, so, <laughs> like the, I mean the this thing is um is running on port thirteen thirty seven. Yeah. yeah. But for some reason the browser can't make the request to it. That's so weird. Okay, we're just gonna stop it, and then um, start it over here. 
And then if you go back to Chrome and refresh, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's so lame. Okay, so I guess we can't debug it, so we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Um, we'll just do a bunch of console logs along the way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's do this. Um, if we go to your auth route, um, and here, I'll, I'll write the code from my end. So let's see. We are in the login route here. Um, So actually, let's just log result uh, right, right after line 101. Just log result to see if that get, if we get uh, a validation response. Um, and then if we scroll a little bit, if there was a user, Otherwise, respond with that. Let's just see if we get that far. So if you go back to Chrome, let's see if we actually get the validation response logged. All right. So yeah, it's going to be in the back end log. Oh, yeah. Is there anything, is there any way to get that in the browser logs or the browser console from the back end? No, not really. I mean, not unless you built like a browser based log. Gotcha. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, oh, I see. So you are um, sending. Oh no no! So the result actually has a value. Okay okay. But rec .body .username should have a thing. Okay. So it's going to try to find the user, at least, um, and then we're going to compare the password. Mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe this uh, create token send response is what's not responding. So we're signing the token. If there's an error, we do that. Otherwise, risk.json. That looks OK. Um, let's actually just log right here and make sure that it, it's a valid password. Just Let's just do a regular console log. Uh, let's just say valid password. Uh, just like in in quotes, it's just a string, just to know oh, that see. this that that this happened. <laughs> Josh says, "Time to do some console log debugging, or as I call it, the only way to, to debug." <laughs> no, I mean, the the VS Code debugger is pretty awesome when it works. I've never seen that before. Like it it said it was running, and we could request it otherwise, but the View app couldn't request it for some reason. Interesting. Okay, uh, but let's uh, yeah try to try it again and then see if we get um, valid password logging. We don't. <laughs> All right, so it's failing. Uh, it's failing here. Let's actually log the result because um, I I don't know if bcrypt actually returns a boolean. Bcrypt dot compare. I don't know, but um, let's just log the result right here. That's weird. Can you go back? I think I hit it like a keyboard shortcut. <laughs> Sorry. Probably <laughs> yeah, let, a little different. Let cut, yeah, let me cut it, uh, code it from my end. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, let's just, oh yeah, go go for it. Just Let's just console log uh, result. And um, I'm just going to add in front of that. Um, so what's the result of comparing those, uh, those passwords? OK. Cool. Let's see what happens. Scroll, 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 scroll. Nothing. So it doesn't even make it that far. <laughs> uh, users.find1, I guess, is it working? Oh, you uh, know what? I think 
I think what it's running into right now is I think uh, I got to change over the. There is no user. Oh, is it, is it looking? Okay. It's looking to try and connect to the remote database. Ah, that'll do it, <laughs> won't it? Um, we should set that up as an environment variable as well. Okay. Um, so actually, you don't want to show that on screen. Uh, right. Do you have an, Do you have the ability to hide your screen for a second? Um. Yeah. Do that, and then, um, in your dot env, we'll add another value that's just like um, a db underscore url. And since we're local, then this just needs to be the local one. Um, so it's probably like mongodb, or uh, yeah, mong. You got it. There you go. Yeah, you can just uh, pull those into your .env. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, put that in there. And then uh, in that connection file, just uh, get rid of that uh, or like save that connection URL somewhere else because you, well, I guess you've already set up an environment uh, secret with that for your deployed server. Oh, uh, okay. I would, yeah, I would still just get rid of it. <laughs> uh, or like, but put it somewhere else so that you don't open it on stream. Uh, is this on um, a MongoDB Atlas? Cool. Um, Um, it's, it's fine for now, but I, I, you probably wouldn't have that because when you're deployed, the DB URL is going to be the remote one anyways. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, but just close this file so you don't open it back up. And uh, you can show your screen again. Are we back? Yep. We're back. Cool. <laughs> um, so in this connection file, um, we can... Um, just use process.env. So uh, right there where you're using remote, just say uh, process.env.db underscore URL. And so that will use the uh, uh, variable from there. And you might need to kill your server and restart it. I don't know if it, it reloads the .env. Now let's take a look. There we go. With that. Cool. Oops. So uh, maybe in the future, though, you should probably add just on the front end, if an error happens, show the error message. Because I guess it, but the thing is, the um, it was hanging, wasn't it? It wasn't actually showing an error message. Yeah. I mean, it was getting stuck on the, the remote or the DB thing, which probably okay. won't be a, an error going forward now that's set up in like environment variables. Okay. I'm just curious really really quick in the code what happens if there is no user it does respond though it says uh find one uh yeah, register uh, here that's actually oh, the register route there okay. we go very similar um, cuz if there is a user do that otherwise respond with the 422 status code Okay, but yeah, maybe it was just trying to connect to that database forever. Cool. So, I think we've debugged most things. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I guess if you play around on the front end, is everything working as intended? Take a look. I'd have to make um, create a new account. Yeah. I don't know why I put all these things in here. <laughs> Just to demonstrate it, I guess, but definitely is. Okay, so that works. But wait, no, give me an error. View router. Um, click on the network tab because there might have been a, an issue um, in the register route. Um, yeah, click on filter actually. Here, I'll. Yeah, if you do filter and then filter by XHR, then you can just see. Oh, cool. there you go. Yeah. 
Um, no, it did register the user, just something else happened. <laughs> but the registration was successful. So Very you cool. could try logging in with that user. Yeah, cool. something, for whatever reason, it, what was that error? Um, uncut, uncaught promise on the few rows. Yeah, so it could be that you don't have a try catch around something. Verify well, auth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. For now, though, let's just try to deploy all this code and make sure that it works on the deployed server, right? Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Cool. So <clears throat> I have Netlify, the front end, uh, deployed on Netlify through just uh, GitHub. Okay. So if you push the front end, it'll like auto build and deploy? Yep. That. And then on the back end, just running the now CLI. So just... um, but before, uh, wait, before you deploy though, we need to set up those environment variables. Oh, okay. Um, so for that, we can use um, now. Uh, uh, you could JSON? use secrets, but yeah, actually, we'll just set them up because the the um, at least the origin URL we can put in here. That's not a secret value. Um, but yeah, so in here, you can add a property uh, called E and D, uh, really just anywhere. Yep. And then that's an object. And the keys are the environment variable. So one we need to set is uh, a node E and V. Let's set that to production. So do up uppercase? Yeah. Uh, you can leave the quotes off. Okay. I think. Wait, maybe not. How does JSON work? Yeah, we need the quotes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then this value is uh, production. With uh, double quotes, yeah. And then we also need the uh, core's origin. And that's going to be your Netlify URL. Okay. Trying to think of where I have it now that I don't want to open it up. And uh, let me just. Cool. Yeah, no worries. Like it built and deployed successfully. Nice. Go. <clears throat> Oh, um, I yeah, guess so I don't, I just need the base URL. I don't need the. Exactly. Yeah. So you can get rid of all that. Uh, and then um, we will need to set your DB URL. So go ahead and do this. Um, do DB underscore URL, but then the value we're going to use a secret before. Have you used uh, now secrets before? No. I'll show you how to do it. Um, so right here uh, in double quotes, uh, do an at sign. Uh, and then some name for a secret key that we're going to add. You could call this like. Uh, auth dash db dash url really whatever you like but ultimately right. this name this name is what we're going to use to set it um and i think that's all the variables we need okay but now let's set up that secret uh no trailing comma oh okay yeah uh but so now from the command line we need to add the secret so um you're gonna need to hide your screen in a second but uh, basically you can do now uh secrets add Um, and then add like all one or do I, uh, no, uh, uh, let, uh, I can't see anything you're doing, <laughs> uh, but it's a uh, three separate, three separate words. So now space okay. secrets, space add, there we go. Um, put the name of the secret. So, uh, auth dash DB dash URL and then a space and then put in, uh, your actual deployed Mongo URL. Okay. I 
since it's going to be in the now. Yeah. And so they, they hide your secrets very securely. Um, so you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, I think it doesn't like my pen. Uh, it could be. You might have to wrap it in double quotes if it's oh. like a bunch of weird characters. Yeah. Oh, I can see in your shared terminal. <laughs> so I can see you typing, but that, okay, that, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, have yeah, then... the side. Uh, so wrap it um, in double quotes? Yeah, that should do it. Okay, there we go. Cool. Did it say that it added it? Or did it show you an error? No, it just it didn't show an error. I cleared the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, type uh, now secrets list. Oh, zero secrets. Yeah. Done. Are there any nested double quotes? Let's say in the same thing. Not like my password. Oh, wait, wait. Uh... Oh. The bang there's got to be a way to do th <laughs> uh, There's got to be a way to do this. Um, <clears throat> let me just search the web really quick. All right, cool. Capture top moment. Highlight video. Oh, they're following suit with Twitch. I see. Okay, it looks like you can use single quotes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so instead of double quotes, you single quote. You don't have any uh, single quotes in your password, do you? Uh, no. Okay, that would have been an issue probably. I don't believe. Okay. I don't know if... Um, uh, last pass or whatever i don't know if they use quotes or anything like that for special characters oh generate generating passwords yeah, yeah. Um. There we go. Success. Nice. So now when you deploy, it should use all of those environment variables. Yeah, so now we're good to so, deploy yeah. the back end then. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Should be up and running now. Cool. So now we can test the deployed Netlify instance. And you probably need to register an account first, right? What's that? You probably need to register an account. For now? Oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, like on, on your site. Oh, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, there's no data users in the database. I haven't gotten any issues yet. I got the message back. Not properly. logged in. Cool. Um, so we need to add a new user. <laughs> Sean DeMan. <laughs> Build this out too many times. <laughs> this is where um, uh, integration tests would help, I guess. Yeah. Register. See is it, it supposed to like uh, redirect on a successful register or what's that? Yeah, it is should redirect to the... Uh, click on network. Let's see if oh, it's pending. Okay, and it failed. Let's see why. Um, click on headers. Click on console. It might actually be the core's error. Okay. Yep. Um, 
no header was present. So um, something went horribly wrong, but like I said, this actually isn't a Corsair issue. I think this is because the route didn't work. Um, pull up your now dashboard and we can actually look at the logs for the server and see what went, what went wrong, if anything went wrong. All right. Uh, yeah, took the triple dots and then uh, we'll cook your face and then go to dashboard, I think. Oh. Yeah. Um, yep, click on that. And we should see the logs. Task timed out after 10 seconds. It might not be able to connect to the database. Um, was it connected to the database before, or you haven't been able to debug that? Haven't been able to. We didn't get that far yet. Okay, so that might be that might be another issue. Um, let's just Would, double check the code really quick. Uh, I'm go assuming ahead. that running, like working with At Mongo Atlas, would be the same like API as like working with Monk. Yeah, yeah. Be... So the the database URL is great. Um, did you ever set up your security rules on MongoDB Atlas? Mm, I don't believe so. So yeah, you'll have to do that. That's one of the, the things with uh, Atlas is by default, it blocks all connections um, unless you allow a, a given connection. And, and for this, because now doesn't have uh, like a dedicated IP address, you have to, have to actually just allow access to all IP addresses. Okay. Um, but that's doable. Um, so yeah, pull up the MongoDB um, or the Atlas um, dashboard. And actually, uh, do you have a uh, Heroku account? Um, I think I made one, but I don't. I've never used it. Okay, um, because I just found out yesterday that they still let you use Imlab, which is much easier to set up than uh, MongoDB Atlas. But you oh, really? can't you can't directly sign up for Imlab because it's be, it's can being converted to MongoDB Atlas. But regardless, um. Okay, I don't know how to do this, but <laughs> maybe uh, click the uh, the triple dots there next to collections. Um, what do you get? Edit configuration, maybe? Uh, that's, I think that's just... Okay, yeah, let's go back to... We need to find something that's... Uh, yeah, network access, there we go. Boom. Um, and and so we need to set all of these or to like all requests because yeah Netlify so uh, is dynamic ip oh uh now is because uh, oh. now is the new things that's connected to it but uh, click add ip address and click allow access from anywhere <laughs> then click confirm cool there we go and then once that's active um should be good to go and Skelly's in the chat. Hello, Skelly. Hey, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Ending. Yeah, so I mean, if you're deploying to another service like AWS LightSail, you could assign a static IP to your server. And then instead of allowing access from all IPs, you could say only my server with this IP can access the database. Right, that makes sense. Um, but for now, this is at least good for debugging. Um, but the issue with now is every time your server spins up, it could potentially have a different IP address. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, can you um, hide this screen for a second? Yeah. Or do you want me to just hide it in general? Um, don't let the people on the stream see it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. I just wanted to make sure they can hear me. Cool, yep. Um, so it looks like it's good to go. Okay. And so we can just close out of this and then, uh,
try again <laughs> and keep this page open because that will, the logs we can see the logs as uh, the requests come into the back end. All right, keep my screen hidden then. Oh no no no! You can show your screen now. Oh. <laughs> All right. Wait uh, wait wait <laughs> wait. Uh, are you showing your screen? Yeah. Hide everything so it's just me and you, <laughs> and then let me know when. Okay. Is it just so, me and you? Yeah. They can't hear us. You can't hear me? No, I'm asking if they can they can't hear us. Oh no, they can hear us. They can hear us. Yeah. Hello everyone. <laughs> Is that okay, what you, do you want them to hear us? I can mute it. <laughs> no, I don't want them to hear us. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be right back. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, hello, the nerdy dev. We did say hello. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to add some like really verbose logging here because we can't really even see what's happening. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, let's just add some logs to the register route on your back end, um, okay. and uh, we can kind of we'll, we'll just debug it one step at a time like we did before. Um, okay, but it so could be that register it's register route. Well, we if we needed to change anything, did we actually change anything down here? I don't believe so. No, I mean we do still logs. have. Yeah, we just have our console logs sticking around, but that's okay. It'll help when we're trying to log in later. Yeah. Um, so users.find one might actually, oh, you know what? Let's add a dot catch to your uh, your users query. You can definitely do that. So okay. um, follow the dot bin that starts on line 60. So where does that end? Oh, you do have a dot catch on it. Um, I think. Yeah. Or is that a dot catch on the other thing? One, two. Um, put put your cursor on the uh, the curly brace. It'll light up the other one. You scroll oh. up. Yeah, like that curly brace. Let's see which one matches. Yeah, there is no dot catch. Let's put a dot catch on it. Okay. <clears throat> cool. So, um, and actually, let's add that to the login route too, because that might have was might have been what was happening earlier too. The uh, login request wasn't caught. Yeah, I think line one thirty one. 
Um, the curly Ooh. brace online 108 you should match oh, yeah. up. So um, click that one, and then gotcha. there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. So I would uh, push push that up to now and see what happens. <laughs> That give us some uh, more verbose. Well, if it can't connect to the database, we should get a more like a decent error, and we should actually get a response that says, "Hey, can't connect to the database," and then we can debug that. But <laughs> gotcha. Hello, client telephone. What's up? Yeah, I need to I need to clean up my insensitive information. <laughs> yeah, after the stream, you can just go do all the things. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so that's up and did it did now. it deploy yeah okay um and let's actually um yeah, if you go back i think we can find the latest logs if you go back to the dashboard uh, the runtime uh just click back because th this is a a different instance i think like oh that i see one. yeah that makes sense cool <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> And so we'll just try to register and see what happens. All right. Still pending. No, and it filled with a Corsair. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hmm. Um, I don't see anything. Yeah, I mean, it it, it didn't actually go to the catch. Oh. I think. Um, let me look at the MongoDB docs really quick. Um, or sorry, the the Monk docs. Because if it can't connect, we should get an error. Let's see. But client telephone doesn't have any audio. Um, Who else doesn't have audio? Skelly says they have audio. I think oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, what's the best way to share this with you? Discord? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, that has, the, just... that has the link to the Zoom. Let's not do that. Um, here, I'll put it in the chat to, of the Zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sending you a link to the, the Monk docs. Um, so for the manager, we can actually, um, do a dot then on it to to see if it connected. Otherwise, we could. That's where we'll get the error. Um, it's uh, honestly just Google for the monk documentation. Oh, okay. uh, that top one is is the thing. Uh, and then on the left hand side, click Manager under API Reference. So um, we can see that, uh, so this is what we're doing right now. We're saying uh, monk, and then we're invoking it with the connection URL. Yep. You can actually do um, dot then on it to get access to the DB, otherwise um, do something with the catch. So let's, let's just try to add that to the code. Um, so if you go to your connection file um, and write, there. Yeah, you could just log um, connected, but to, but otherwise, and then do a dot catch and log the error. Okay. Yeah. 
and let's just try running it locally. Um, so just do like a npm run dev and um, see if we see uh, connected. Oh. Nope. Keep scrolling. Just, uh, oh. Yeah, so this actually messes things up. So now that we're using uh, .bin and .catch to connect, um, we can't just directly export it. Okay. Um, we have we, to... Let's actually do... Um, What's up, Mr. Redcliffe? Thanks for tuning in, bud. Actually, can you give me just a second? I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for tuning into the stream, everybody. Appreciate it. Hope everybody's having an awesome night or day. <laughs> Uh, yes, I knew I need to clean up my code after the stream. That's okay, though. It'll be fun. All right, I'm back. Okay. Um, okay, so the issue here is that now that we've um, dot vend the invo invocation of monk, um, yep. it doesn't actually return the DB value. Can I see how you're using this file? I guess it's in the auth file. Uh, yeah. Line seven and eight. Okay. Because then you're doing db.get to get the actual user's connection. Yeah, th th what makes this tricky is we basically would have to wrap all of this in a promise and then um, your routes to actually use it would need to call that promise to get the resolved value. Mm. Weird. Um, however, if you scroll up in your terminal, I just let's just see if it actually logs um, connected. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, it. doesn't because then the db.get happens. Um, Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the best way to debug this. I think I've I've actually only gotten MongoDB Atlas working like once. I've had a lot of issues with MongoDB Atlas. It's not an easy thing to use. Really? Um, okay, click on your connection file. I, I think ultimately we have to do this because otherwise we're not going to be able to see what the error is when we're trying when we're trying to connect to the database. Right. Um, so here's what we do. Um, let's create a function called get db in connection yeah in this file yeah okay and then inside of here uh we'll move that uh monk code so um there yeah let's move that in And uh, let's just make this an async function so it'll be a little bit easier to handle. So put, put async in front of uh, the function keyword. And then uh, we can do um, const db equals await monk. And then get rid of the dot then and the dot catch. And then we're just going to wrap this thing in a try catch. Yep. So, uh, in uh, basically, wrap line five in a try catch. Okay. Uh, it's a curly braces. So, um, just try curly brace new line on the end of that. Close your curly brace, and then do a catch. Um, and then inside, so catch does have parentheses on it. Uh, you can pass the error into it. Okay. Error, and then inside the catch here, uh, let's log the error. 
Um, and right above that, let's just log a string that says error connecting to DB. So it's easy to find. Um, and let's do this. Uh, so right above the function, just create a variable called DB. Just say like let DB equals null. And then uh, we're gonna assign it. So at the beginning of the get DB function, we'll say um, if not, well, if DB, then we'll just return DB. Cool. Uh, and then on line seven, we'll just say uh, DB, get rid of const there. So we're gonna assign it um, and then we'll return it right after line seven. So just say return DB. So basically what we're doing here is uh, on line three, we define that variable so we can reuse it. Mm -hmm. And then in our, in our other file, we're gonna call this function anytime we need the DB um, to, um, and it's gonna be a promise. So that way it'll resolve the DB. If we've already connected line five, we'll say like we've already connected. So it just returns that instance. Um, if it didn't connect, then it's gonna try to connect again and we'll see that error log. So that's great. Um, and now on line 16, um, we should export git db instead of db. Cool. Yeah. But now everywhere where you were using db, we have to actually use git db. <laughs> okay, so I think that's only actually only in this one instance right here because we only have the users collection yeah at the moment. but it but it's a promise and so you actually need to like call it every time so let's do this like line seven okay. uh change that to uh instead of db call that get db and then uh we're gonna get rid of line eight because we'll have to i mean technically we could return the users from it uh, we'll do it every time <laughs> okay uh, at least so because there's only like two routes right or th yeah. three okay well yeah so, i guess three including the the verify okay so now if you scroll down to wherever you're using um users like here like users.find one uh before you can use users we actually need to um get the database instance and then get the users collection so um, right after line 56 for register, let's just say um, const db equals uh, await uh, get db. Uh, and you have to invoke it. And then um, that users. Next. Uh, no, then on the next line, you can just say const users equals db.get users. I mean, technically, we could store users in the like the get db function, uh, but users equals db.get users. Get users? Uh, get invoked and then pass in the string users. Oh, I see. Yep. Um, so that's great. And then we need to make this an async function. So line 54 needs to be async. That's right here. And um, we need to do that every place where you use user. So I mean, down there is fine because we defined the users on line fifty-eight. So that this 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 should still work. Okay. But uh, just like copy those two lines, fifty-seven and fifty-eight, and then um, you need to use those in your other functions that call the database. So I guess the okay. login function. Yep, that should be the only other one. Um, so I can put it right under. Here. Mm -hmm. This is an async function. Yeah. Now, the one thing is this if this, I guess this won't throw an error because we're actually catching it. It will eventually throw an error that says um, cannot read property get of null, but or, but that's okay. Um, and yeah, keep scrolling all the way to the bottom. So it has crashed. Let's see where it crashed. Scroll uh... up. Line nine, uh, character two. No, that's okay. Um, 
Oh, here. wait. Auth index. Yeah, that's the right thing. Uh, I don't think so. Make the terminal a little bit bigger so I can see the more more of the air. <laughs> um, scroll up more. Um, keep scrolling. Oh, middlewares is trying to use users as well. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so if you go in your middlewares file. That makes sense. Um, I would want to do it right here. Yeah, and you'd have to make this an async function. And uh, so yeah, that becomes async. Um, but if you scroll up to the top, you need to, need to get rid of the db.get. Yep, and then rename line three to be um, get db. I'll be right back. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm back. If you look at the terminal, are any more errors? Oh, it's running Cool. Off. No more errors. <laughs> so let's just try it locally. Okay. Um, uh, so, sorry. yeah. If, oh, yeah. And you'll need to start at the front end, too. These little dots must be from the, the highlighter thing. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if we go to register, well, actually, we could probably since this is using the local DB, I can just. Well, should we have that log already? I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> you can just try if you just try logging in, you'll you'll see this in. But yeah, you're already this far. That's fine. Cool. Now let's check the back in. It should uh, try to log something. Hmm. Um, click on uh, network. Yeah. Pending. It says it's pending. Um, okay. Uh, go back to your logs. Uh, let's look at your auth register route. Something, something's gone wrong. <laughs> um, we, we might need to wrap it in a try catch though. We, we shouldn't though, because we're we're using the try catch inside of the get db function. Um, okay, so for this one, let's actually just wrap it in a try catch. Um, okay. So, right after line fifty four, it's so like right at the top of this request handler. Uh, just type try and press tab. It should generate it for you. Or uh, you might need try catch and press tab. Uh, all all one word. Tab, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so put all put all of this code into the try. Cool. And then in the catch, uh, let's call next with the error. <laughs> Um, but, but just real quick, let's look at the connections file. I want to just verify what's going on in there. So we create this function. We export it. OK, yeah, looks good enough to me. Um, let's try again.
And you can just try logging in. That'll be easier. Wow. Let's look at the back end logs. Whoops. So far. Yeah, it at least that? gets gets to the verify. It is calling login twice though. That's kind of weird. Oh, I um, I clicked it twice. <clears throat> okay. Um. Yeah, this is so weird. Um. Yes, we're using live share. Also, I I don't like these console logs. <laughs> can you can you do can you do me a favor? Oh, not these console, but the your your login. I think you're using volleyball for your uh, request logger. Yeah. I feel like we're we're missing out on information. Um, okay. Can you can you uh kill the back end and let's install Morgan? Okay. This is just like a last ditch effort because. <laughs> uh, oh no! Oh uh, no! Don't uninstall anything. Just do npm install Morgan. Yeah, like that. Um. Because yeah, your your backend logs are very minimal, and it's hard to even see what's going on. Um. So yeah, in your app.js. Um. Yeah, instead of bringing in volleyball, you can just comment that line out and bring in Morgan instead. All right. And then uh, scroll down to where you were using volleyball and let's use Morgan instead. Yep. So actually do a Morgan and then invoke it and then pass in the string uh, common. Yep. Now let's start up your backend. <clears throat> cool. And just like oh. try making a request. What's that? Is Nodemon going to conflict with it at all? Oh, that's different. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 just the the logs that log yeah. the incoming and outgoing request. Um okay. So let's give that a shot then. Yeah, let's look at the back end. Now we see less, even less. What the heck? Uh let me look let me let me pull up VS Code really quick. <laughs> Yeah, I it I think that's how Morgan works. <laughs> Just double check. All right, I'm gonna use the restroom really quick. Okay, no worries. <clears throat>
I am back. Oh. Tiny. Tiny. Yeah, so I just added, I had, yeah, I added some logs. Trying to connect to DB. Uh, apparently, that's not working. Um, is MongoDB running locally? I feel like this this worked earlier though, didn't it? Yeah. Um, can you just verify that Mongo is running? <clears throat> MongoDB database server is up and running. Oop. Trying to connect it to DB. Do you think that most of this issue is coming from... Or this issue is coming from trying to use MongoDB and Atlas? Or is it something uh, going no, on in I mean... code? Uh, right now, it's not even connecting locally, right? Well, so you didn't update your .env, did you? Um, no. So your data uh, right now in your .env, the DB URL is still yeah. So this is still your local. That's yeah. totally fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this right now is just a result of us trying to get the the try catch on the monk connection working. Oh right. Um, and I'm very curious why it's not. Um. So, let's do this. So I'm in the connection file. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm just adding as many logs as possible because I'm at a loss at this point. Okay. <laughs> um, do we log the DB or? Yeah, I'm um I'm logging that in the other file. Oh, okay. Um gotcha. so if it's connected, we just return it. Otherwise it's not connecting at all. Um and one thing we might do is um just in the app, so we so we don't even have to wait for a request. We actually could just or even in auth, because we're already bringing it in. When the app starts up, we actually could just do this. Like, we don't wait for it, but now every time the app starts up, um, it should try to connect to the database. Okay. Automatically or whatever? Yeah. So will that run even if I don't hit that endpoint at all? It'll still run that function? Yeah, like no, that's why I did that. Yeah, so basically when the server starts up, it automatically connects to the database instead of, uh, instead of waiting for a request to come in. Um, but... Oh yeah, that kind of makes that makes sense. That's that's not even working. Okay, last ditch effort. Instead of a try catch, we're gonna we're gonna do it the the promise way in here. Okay. Um, if db return promise resolve db. Um, otherwise, we're going to just straight up. Oh, I gotta take that out, uh, Skelly. That is um a verification hex for bit bit shoot. I forgot I had that in there still. I gotta take it out. This is uh, some of my previous videos about the YouTube part. Oh yeah, you know, on the on my you know, it's in the my my profile or whatever on YouTube. It has a like an identifier at the beginning of my profile, and that's how they they verify that it's your account. Basically, I'm setting up a bit shoot for videos, previous videos that have been blocked worldwide due to content ID claims. Like, um, the major one is, what was it? View, view, uh, view basics episode four. We talk about using the CLI and stuff. That one's blocked worldwide due to like one song. Thanks YouTube. So, <laughs> trying to have that sort, those resources available for when people want them. So yeah, I need to take that out. <clears throat> okay, so CJ so, uh, is just I, promiseifying yeah. it. Yeah, so I, I converted it from async await to a. Pro I mean, I don't. This shouldn't be any different, but yeah. Um, this tries to connect, and then once we have the connection, we set this variable up here. So the next time this function gets called, we'll just immediately resolve that variable. Um. Oh yeah, this worked. <laughs> oh. It says it says connected to DB. Oh, cool. Um, but why? 
why did the uh, async await not work? That's insane. Okay, but now that it's connected, you should be able to log in. All right, let's give it a try. Do I have well, to still pending. the front, front end? Uh, you shouldn't have to. No, can you go back to the logs? Already connected to the DB. We're getting the username and value back. Something else is going wrong now. Because it's getting this back from the, the, D, uh, the DB. What version of Node are you using? Um, you need, uh, just kill kill your backend. Oh, yeah, just do this. Uh, node space dash V. 12, 13. 12, 13. One. Okay, that's cool. Um, I think for some reason it really doesn't like these async awaits. Let's look in your um, your login route. Because that's where we're doing um, git db. Um, we throw a console. Well, it's giving the results, so it's obvious it's getting hung up right here because we're getting the result back from the from the database. Yeah, but we're not we're but not getting not, the. So it's the not DB. processing the await. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> I'm curious. I mean, what is is this response error actually working? Set the status code, okay, and then call next. If you look in your app, do you have an error handler set up? Error rec res next, yeah. So this should forward the error on. Yeah. I just love writing such broken code. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we're gonna get rid of the async await because right. that that did, it's not working for some reason. Uh, um, so get db and then we have the db, and then with that db, we can get the users, and then all of this other code will, will go in there. Um, so this user stop fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's try logging in. Pending. Oh, verify is pending now too. Uh, click on console. Uh, click on. Go to your back end. Oh, is your back end running? Yeah. So it's working, but it's not completing the requests. Okay. Um, because, okay, so this is result. Console log result. Maybe the computer is haunted. It says I speak English in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. This, this, is a whole, this is a whole lot of weird stuff that just makes things so much harder to debug because it's like... Even the simplest things aren't working. Um, okay, um, I'm just I'm going I'm I'm going log crazy. All right, do it. <laughs> I mean, if we could if we got the debugger working, that would be awesome because then we could actually see when and where things are breaking. So can, um, can we set breakpoints inside of Chrome, or is that not going to work because it's on the back end? Yeah, it won't work because it's the back. I mean, technically, you could start up a remote Chrome debugger, um, but. I mean, VS Code has it built in, so ideally we should just be able to use that, but we can't, apparently. I've always struggled with um, using the debugger. It just never seems to work for me. Got DB. Yeah. <laughs> um, Someone's making chicken noodle soup. I can smell it. <laughs> no, I... I'm just littering your code with console logs. Um, That's okay. We'll have a cleanup session. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, try logging in. Right. You shouldn't have to refresh. Just click the login button. Okay. Okay, now go to your back end. No error. Already connected to DB. 
and okay, so. So this isn't working. Function isn't running. Yeah, let's look at that connection file I created. Already connected. Should resolve uh, basically an immediate resolved promise with that. Okay. DB because we set it down here. Oh, I definitely need to return this. Huh. Should I try it again? Yeah, but. Uh, I mean, okay, that okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. If it's already returning the. Yeah, it would have already been set so because it says already connected, so we should have gotten back the resolve promise. Okay, yeah, try again. Okay. Okay, I added, I added more things. Try again. Already connected. <laughs> Are we pulling in get DB? For, well, it's just not running. Is it just not even running this function? Uh, it is, it's just not resolving. Um, and that's different than an error. Will, yeah, because I mean, throw an I, error when it res if it doesn't resolve after a certain point. Uh, no, because this doesn't time out. It's just a matter of if that promise throws an error, then it would throw to go to the catch. Um, because I added the catch, that's not running at all. Yeah. Um, let's see really quick. Pretty sure that's how this works. Returns a promise dot resolve. That's like an immediate promise. Um, okay, let's also try this. Let's not call that function when the app starts up. So that way this function will actually call it. Um, try again. Um, is it like a case? Is this like, so it's not, it's not the Mongo DB instance. It's something in the code that's not resolving the problem. Just to reiterate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is this is so weird because I mean we should at least be getting to the dot catch or at least be getting to that next line of code. Um, let's see. So connected to DB that returns the connection. Um, because that is logging, um, no error, trying to connect to DB, connected to DB, that then returns the connection and we should be at line 114. Yeah, because that returns the connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's let's do even more logging. So, connection so file. What is? Can we just log the DB? Yeah, on, we can. We should we should see a bunch of bunch of functions on it. Um, but like right here, we can log the connection. That is the the DB. Oh, I meant um, sorry. And the index like uh on the dot then on the get db function, can we just right away log db and see what happens? That, yeah, but the that got db isn't even running at all, and that very oh. that db variable is the same variable as the connection variable. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. Cool. Yep. So there's. 
There's Mongo. I mean, there's Monk. That's the, the Monk instance. Um, so it's it's connected. It's definitely connected. Um, okay. Instead of trying to do this promise dot resolve thing, um, we're gonna return a new promise that immediately resolves it. Okay. Well, that's we're not running into that though, because it's actually making it down here. And then this is returning the connection. So we have dot then, this returns the connection. And then in auth, the dot then here, db should be that connection. Right. I mean, is it because it's like on a new line? That can't be it, right? Out it. Um, I'm going to not log the connection anymore, though, because it's a lot. If we see connected oh, yeah. to db, then it, then it actually has a value. Oh, gotcha. OK. Um, but yeah, try logging in. Let's look at the back end. Connected to DB. Um, Josh is saying, does promise.resolve need to be in a, in a new promise? It shouldn't. So by default, if you return promise.resolve from something that should return a promise, um, it basically wraps it in a promise. Though we're not even running that line of code anymore. Um, OK, I, I think I'm going to try to run this code locally just to see what happens. OK. Um, Are you going to pull the repos down? Uh, no, I can, I can use your, um, the, the. Oh, yeah, OK. The instance itself. <laughs> I'm going to grab some water really quick, one second. Okay. Yeah, I I really wish we could we could debug this code. Let's let's just try to get that going again. Um, can you can you kill your um, terminal there, the backend? Yep. And then um, click the debug icon on the left, and then click play. Uh, click on debug console. We should see the output there. Uh, right there, yep. Yeah, so it says it is listening. Um, let's also do this. If you go into the live share settings, um, I think click there, yeah, and then um, remove these shared servers. That could be messing stuff up too. Just like kill both of them. Yeah, cool. Um, and now go to Chrome. And let's see if you like refresh the page. Um, yeah, this is insane. Like the fact that like the back end is running. Like if you click on, uh, click that link to localhost 1337, uh, not that one, the other one, 
You click that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's running. It's, it's running. <laughs> but your, look, uh, your local host 8080 um, cannot... It says it, it it says it's not found. It says like it's not even running. Um, so click on your uh, your client tab for localhost eighty eighty. Um, can you do a hard refresh? Do you like Control Shift R? Okay. Uh, click on network, and then click on uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just totally failing. Um, can you go to your back end really quick? I just want to verify um, the core's setup. So go to app.js. Um, options success status. Let's get rid of that. And get rid of credential. Well, actually, I guess you do want that because you want it to be able to uh, pass the cookie through, right? Yeah. OK. <clears throat> um, uh, restart this. So press the. Uh, the green arrow thingy here. <laughs> okay, now try it. Uh, re reverse the page. I just want to see that verify route working. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, th this is uh, this is crazy. <laughs> is, is Josh still watching? Uh, Josh, how probably. how crazy is this, Josh? <laughs> Why doesn't like the, it work? Why the, app, it work? <laughs> the app is literally running and we can <laughs> access it, but the front end from localhost 8080 can't access it from some reason. That is so weird. Um, okay, but just just try logging in really quick. Okay. But the, but my my thought though is we're gonna have the exact same issue. It's basically gonna say like I can't request uh a slash login. But just, yeah. yeah, just try just try logging in. Yeah, through the same one. Not access localhost auth login. Do we need to like re change anything in our environment variables, or did I miss anything from switching no, stuff I mean, over like, to be dynamic? Um, ultimately, um, I am baffled right now. <laughs> oh, you you know what? It could be that your um. We're trying to debug it, but it actually needs to start. You know what? Uh, let's look at the configuration. Um, I'll pull. I'll pull it up on my screen because we might need to tell it what the current working directory directory is. Because that's where your .env is. Your like your .env is in the server folder, right? Uh yeah. <clears throat> the root level. Are you talking about the debugger, like the when it's like looking at the configuration of? Uh yeah. So it could be that because it can't load the .env, the origin is set to nothing. Um, actually, you try to do this. So if you go to, yeah, go in here, um, try typing um, right above program. Do you like double quotes? And okay, you do get autocomplete. Uh, search for work, uh, search for directory. Search for current. Search for root. Okay, let me look it up. <laughs> env or let's see oh in file yeah try that there, there was one called in file yeah yep um and then make it so that it's slash server slash dot env yeah so do you uh, well get, get rid of that forward slash oh okay i see it's gotta be yeah slash slash server slash env backslash Every part of debugging tonight has may has been whack. Yeah, this is, yeah, no, yeah, this is uh, this is insane. This is not, <laughs> this is not how coding works. <laughs> yeah, and well, I mean, just I a, guess just it, a it, preface to the whole thing. It did work locally completely last week. Everything worked. So I don't yeah, know. Something then, changed, and we've been screwing around with okay. the code. So now it doesn't even work locally again. So okay, go ahead and try to restart. So click that green, <laughs> that green thing, green circular button to restart it. And then try in the browser again. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> okay, nice. Wait, no, it's still pin. Well, it's still pending though. Oh. Um. Do I need to start? Hey, what? 
because it view wasn't able to access the back end. Uh, click on your your uh, VS Code again. Let me see the logs in the debugger. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it did connect to the DB. Cool. So actually, click on the off file. You might have to move that. You can click the dots on the left oh, there to we move go. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, go to the index off file. <clears throat> and let's set a breakpoint um, right on line 112, right there. Yeah. Now go to the front end and click login. Cool. So <laughs> debugging is actually working. Um, but oh, you know what? I can see the debugging stuff on my end too, and I guess I can step into it. That's crazy. But we're going to step into the git db function. Now, currently, uh, db is defined. So we then go in. Wait, what just happened? Um, is the console log breaking it? What the heck? It stopped. Like if you scroll all the way down. On the. Right is here. it still running? Yeah. Yeah, the server stopped. The debugging server. Click, click play. And let's actually. So uh, yeah, click play. Oh, so it's okay. Never mind. Click, put a breakpoint on line seven. Uh, there. Yeah. Now let's try again. So just click log in on your front end. Okay. Cool. Uh, click um, uh, on the far right. Click the play the play button over here. Nope, not that one. Oh, this one. That that one, yeah. Because that should jump there. All right. Now, if you hover over DB, does it have a value? No. Uh, here, hover over that. Uh, so it does have a value. Great. Now, if you click uh, this button here, this is step into the function. So click that. Step in. Okay. Do it again. Okay. Um, do it again. And it breaks right there. Because like this should resolve it. Um, so it's this dot then that's breaking it? Yeah. It's so weird. But um, OK. We could sort of fix that. Um, or try try a different way of resolving the promise. So, like in the connection over here, um, instead of returning promise resolve, um, turn a new promise. This is what uh, Josh was mentioning earlier. Uh, um, you can pass resolve in as a, a so an argument to a new a promise. A new yeah. Promise. So instead. Of, Instead of doing promise resolve, this actually just creates a new promise, and then we just immediately resolve it to be that db uh, variable. OK. So uh, let's see if this changes anything. Um, click the uh, green circle to restart the debugging. Cool. And then try logging in. And actually, uh, let's just set a breakpoint on line 113, because hopefully it'll just make it there. And it never does. But does it go to the catch? I don't think so, because that, I mean, maybe it does. Um, can you go to your web browser yeah. and look at the network, network tab? Yeah, see, the login is still pending. Hmm. I'm just adding all kinds of breakpoints. Try logging in again. <laughs> Is it still running? Uh, go to VS Code. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's still giving that, still gives the object back, but. Oh, do I have to um, start the debugger again, like restart? Oh, uh, yeah, let's, let's totally restart it, yeah. I click that for the oh, green arrow. Oh, was yeah. that? The green. Oh, that was the green arrow will 
restart without killing it. That's that's okay. Okay. Um. Cool. Yeah, I have a bunch of breakpoints. Just try logging in. All right. Go to your backend code. Connect it to DB. What? Okay. Uh, one thing we're not doing is um, potentially handling uncaught errors. There might be an error somewhere that's totally uncaught that we're not seeing and it's not being logged. So let's do this. Go to your app.js. Okay. Uh, and, and go ahead and kill this. So just click the stop button over here. All right. Um, and let's do this like right after line 55. Yep. Do uh, process.on. And then invoke it. And then uh, put single quotes. It might auto suggest. Here we go. Uh, scroll down to um, like potentially uncaught exception. Keep going. Yeah, uncaught exception. And then uh, give it a callback right after that. And that should accept the uh, error. And then let's just log the error. Cool. And then uh, like copy paste that line. And instead of uncaught exception, we're going to add uh, uncaught rejection. Or, um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> if you uh, get rid of everything and type the single quotes, it'll give you the suggestions again. Well, not everything. Um, th that, yeah, the error name. And scroll down. Go yeah. Unhandled Un projection. Yeah, there we go. Unhandled projection. <clears throat> Maybe this will catch something. Oh, so cool. <laughs> um, start it up. I started in the debug again, or just uh, just yeah, spin yeah, why it not? Up? Okay, it should be fine. Let's, let's just do that. All right, yep. Okay, uh, kill the debug mode and just start it in the uh, it's like own terminal. Okay, I'm at a loss. <laughs> um, I didn't know how long you wanted to be streaming. Um, I guess we've been live. Yeah, it's been about hours. two hours. We can call it for now. Um, okay. And we can take a look at it off off uh, off stream closer and figure out what the heck is going on. Yeah, I might try to just get it running locally on my machine. Um, but I mean, th this is just maddening because the the connection file is returning the variable, which means the promise has been resolved. But right. then in the thing that's calling it, the dot then just gets skipped. It like never gets called. And the dot catch never gets called either. So there's not an error. It just literally never goes into the dot then. Just falls into the void. Yeah. So that's crazy. <laughs> Do you think but, um, maybe what if yeah. we like tried using... Well, I guess it's not really monk at this point. It would, it's just the, the f something going wrong with the function. But do you think using well, a different library than monk or just the Mongo API itself would resolve that, it? That, uh, I don't know if it'd resolve it. I think it might be a different issue entirely. But we could use, like, mongoose um, or something like that. But oh, right. yep. there's, there's got to be something. I'll, I'll, I'll debug this offline, and, and maybe we can, like, stream again uh, next week or something like that. Yeah, I'd really like that. I think that'd be cool. Um, <clears throat> For the most part, though, we we fixed some things, yeah. <laughs> but then um, ultimately where we started running into the stuff is when we went to uh, deploy the server and check to see if the deployed server could connect to the deployed database. Yep. We had we had no way of checking that, which is why we've gone down this path, which got even weirder going down this path. <laughs> but that's the way uh, it goes, I guess. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the channel, folks. <laughs> Cool. Well, we got something else in here now, really quick. Post auth login dash 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 milliseconds. I don't know if that means anything. It's probably just a timeout thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if anything, people learned how to debug today. So. Yeah. 
cool. Sort of. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, yeah, we'll call it for the evening. And uh, thanks again, CJ, for spending some time with us, hanging out and helping us get through this and creating more problems. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, maybe ton. next time. Yeah, maybe next time we can solve it and then do some refactoring or some yeah. like uh, code review. That'd be fun. Yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on here. It means a lot to me. I've learned so much from your channel and 100% behind you all the way. So big shouts appreciate to it. CJ, CJ of the Coding Garden. If you haven't checked out his channel, which I'm sure all of you have, but go check it out because it's amazing. So, all right, folks, uh, we're going to wrap it up for this session. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Live Coding with RabbitWorks JavaScript. My name is Sean. I've been joined by CJ on the Coding Garden. His channel oh. is linked in the description. Make sure to go check that out. Again, thank you, CJ, for joining us. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. All right, guys and gals and coding rabbits, we'll catch you on the flip side. This has been Sean. I can't say stay awesome anymore because apparently that's a PewDiePie thing. <laughs> so I don't want... Anyways, have a good night. Keep coding, and we will see you next time.